Nearly every hypothesis that Pluto might be an inert lump of ice has been disproved or turned on its head in the five years after a historic encounter. Pluto is a fascinating, lively and important world for science, despite the fact that it is literally out in the cold. Amazingly, it may even hold some of the answers to a deeper comprehension of the other little planets in the farthest limits of our solar system. What are the most fascinating, odd and unexpected discoveries that scientists have made regarding the Pluto system? Let's find out. Pluto appears to have taken the adage, always follow your heart, literally. A massive million square mile nitrogen glacier makes up Pluto's heart, one of the distinguishing characteristics that New Horizons saw on approach and captured in high definition images during the flyby. Sputnik Planitia, the left ventricle of the heart, essentially forced the dwarf planet to rotate so that the basin now almost exactly opposes Pluto's moon, Charon. True polar wonder is the process through which a planetary body modifies its spin axis, typically in reaction to significant geologic processes. The location of Sputnik Planitia is not by chance. It's a cold trap where a sheet of ice at least two and a half miles, that's four kilometers thick, has been formed through nitrogen ice accumulation. It physically tilted the dwarf planet so that the basin aligned closer with the tidal axis between Pluto and Charon due to the continual imbalance of that large mass and the tidal yanks and pulls of Charon as it orbited Pluto. It is also believed that this event caused the several enormous faults in Pluto's crust that zigzag across significant areas of Pluto as well as cracks in Pluto's surface. The basin is believed to have developed closer to Pluto's North Pole and to the northwest of where it is now. And if ice continues to build up on the basin, Pluto will keep turning around. However, there's more to that tale. Pluto's surface is likely covered by a large ocean of liquid water. Sputnik Planitia may have been reoriented by more than just ice that had been collected. Scientists believe that the heavier mass may be an ocean of water, since data from New Horizons observations of the basin suggest that it may have been affected by a heavier mass beneath it. That finding was astounding. As with Titan, Europa and Enceladus, it would turn Pluto into an elusive ocean world. There are numerous more lines of evidence that hint at an ocean beneath Pluto's crust, such as tectonic formations visible in New Horizons images. A Kuiper Belt object that was 30 to 60 miles, that's 50 to 100 kilometers across, likely struck Pluto some 4 billion years ago, carving out a significant portion of its icy crust and leaving only a thin, weak layer at the basin's floor. This impact resulted in the formation of Sputnik Planitia. The weak crust of the basin was likely invaded from below by a subterranean ocean, and later the thick layer of nitrogen ice that can be observed there today was deposited on top. Recent theories based on photographs of the planet hypothesize that Pluto may have formed quickly and violently, creating this liquid ocean. Pluto's liquid ocean is still liquid, which suggests that the planet is still tectonically active. Massive faults sever about 2.5 miles through Pluto's frozen crust and extend for hundreds of kilometers. However, one of the only explanations offered by scientists for how Pluto acquired such fissures is the progressive freezing of an ocean beneath its surface. Like an ice cube in your freezer, Water expands when it freezes and under an icy crust, that expansion will push and shatter the surface. The ice will again contract if the temperature is low enough and the pressure is high enough for water crystals to begin to form a more compact crystal structure. Pluto possesses the parameters for that kind of contraction, according to models using data from New Horizons. But there are no known geologic features on the planet that would suggest a contraction has already taken place. According to scientists, this indicates that the deep water is still undergoing freezing, which could result in the formation of fresh surface faults. If Pluto is an ocean world with active life, it is possible that the Kuiper Belt has other ocean worlds among its dwarf planets, greatly increasing the number of locations in our solar system 
that could support life. Although Pluto's liquid ocean probably still exists today, scientists believe it is mostly cut off by ice, with the exception of the region directly beneath Sputnik. That means it most likely doesn't make contact with the surface today, but it might have in the past though, through a volcanic process known as cryovolcanism. Pluto had a history of volcanic activity and still might. However, it may not be volcanic in the sense you may expect. On Earth, molten lava spews, dribbles and bubbles and explodes via volcanoes perched kilometers above and jutting out from the waters, like those in Hawaii. On Pluto, however, there are multiple signs that at different times a form of icy slushy cryolava has spilled over the surface. They refer to it as cryovolcanism. Two massive mountains south of the Sputnik Planitia, Reitmons and Picardmons, both have deep center pits that are thought to be the mouths of cryovolcanoes that are unlike any others in the solar system. Viking Terra, which is located to the west of Sputnik, has extensive grabbins and cracks that indicate signs of once flowing cryolavas all over the surface. The Virgil Fossae region, located further west of Sputnik Planitia, is where ammonia-rich cryolavas appear to have burst to the surface and covered a region of several thousand square kilometers in red-colored organic molecules no more than one billion years ago, if not even more recently. Speaking of current events, Pluto's surface is still covered in glaciers, which have been doing so for billions of years. Pluto now joins Earth, Mars and a few other moons in having glaciers that are now flowing. Numerous, mainly nitrogen ice glaciers, stream down from mountains with pits into the basin to the east of Sputnik Planitia and carve down valleys as they go. The source of the ice in the glaciers is thought to be seasonal and mega-seasonal cycles of nitrogen ice that sublimate from ice to vapor, drift around the dwarf planet and then freeze again on the surface. However, these glaciers differ from the water ice glaciers we have on Earth. For starters, because liquid nitrogen is less thick than solid nitrogen, any melts within them will float to the top rather than descend toward the glacier's surface. It's even possible that some of the liquid nitrogen may even erupt as jets or geysers as it emerges on top of the glacier. In addition, some of Pluto's surface is made of water ice, which has a somewhat lower density than nitrogen ice. Some of those water ice rocks will rise up through the glacier and float like icebergs as Pluto's glaciers sculpt the surface. Sputnik Planitia, the largest glacier known to exist on Pluto, measures more than 620 miles, that's a thousand kilometers across, or roughly the size of Oklahoma and Texas put together. These icebergs can be seen in several images taken by New Horizons of Sputnik Planitia. Meanwhile, the atmosphere of Pluto is slowly disappearing. A recent study suggests that the gases surrounding Pluto are now dissipating and turning back into ice as the dwarf planet moves farther from the Sun. Holding on to your atmosphere as a celestial body isn't always easy, just ask Mars, and the new study suggests that this is happening right now. With only a trace amount of methane and carbon monoxide, Pluto's atmosphere, which is already on the thin side, is primarily composed of nitrogen. The atmosphere appears to be fading as a result of nitrogen freezing up once more as surface temperatures plummet. Utilizing occultation, which involves utilizing a far-off star as a backlight for telescopes on Earth to observe Pluto, the judgment was made. It is a tried and true observation method that is frequently employed in astronomy. According to planetary scientist Elliot Young of the Southwest Research Institute, SWRI in Texas, scientists have been using occultations to track changes in Pluto's atmosphere since 1988. Small changes in temperature cause large changes in the bulk density of Pluto's atmosphere, which is formed from the evaporated ice on the surface. The dwarf planet currently completes one circle of the Sun in 248 Earth years, 
traveling as close to the Sun as 30 astronomical units AUs, or 30 times the distance between Earth and the Sun at one point. However, when that distance widens, Pluto will receive less sunlight and experience colder temperatures. The increase in atmospheric density seen in 2015 is probably the result of thermal inertia or leftover heat trapped in the nitrogen glaciers that have a delayed response to the enlarging distance between Pluto and the Sun. This can be compared to how the Sun warms beach sand. High noon is when the Sun is at its brightest, but the sand continues to absorb heat throughout the afternoon, making late afternoon the hottest time of day. Pluto may no longer be considered a planet, a point of considerable debate among specialists, but astronomers continue to be very interested in it as a planetary entity. We are always learning new things about this far-off rock. The planet may appear brighter in the sky if it eventually freezes and falls because it would reflect more sunlight. Also, the lack of small craters on Pluto and Chiron has important ramifications. It's kind of common in space to discover craters on the surfaces of planets. The fact that neither Pluto or Charon contains many tiny craters, nearly all of them are large, is the only unusual feature of the Pluto system. The fact that there were fewer small craters than anticipated startled scientists because it implied that there are also fewer smaller Kuiper Belt objects than anticipated. These findings help us understand how the solar system came to be, since they provide information on the population of smaller objects that make up larger ones, like Pluto and potentially even Earth. We encounter unexpected phenomena that refute established hypotheses every time we explore a new region of the solar system. Two distinct terrain types can be found on the side of Chiron that New Horizons images in high resolution. A vast southward extending plain, officially known as Vulcan Planitia, that is at least the size of California, and a rough terrain, referred to as Ozterra, that extends northwards to Chiron's North Pole. Both appear to have been created by the freezing and expanding of an ancient ocean that existed beneath Chiron's crust. While the expansion in the south made its way through vents, fractures, and other openings as cryolava pouring across the surface, Moderate expansion in the north developed that rocky mountainous environment of Ozterra that is visible today. In reality, it's believed that Vulcan Planitia originated as a massive cryo flow that engulfed the area early in Chiron's existence. Similar features can be found on a few ice satellites throughout the solar system, notably the enormous moon Triton of Neptune, Tethys, Dion, Enceladus of Saturn, and of course Miranda and Ariel of Uranus. The models of Chiron's past will also serve as a Rosetta Stone to help in deciphering the volcanic and geologic activity of those other frozen worlds due to the detailed photographs of Chiron taken by New Horizons. Pluto underwent a transformation thanks to New Horizons, going from a fuzzy telescopic dot to a vibrant world with astounding diversity and unexpected complexity. We are all astonished by the variety of phenomena present throughout the Pluto system, from Charon's polar features, an enormous chasm, to the four smaller satellites' iceball composition, which provided important hints about the system's beginnings. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.